this video, we're going to do a, a very basic chemistry experiment, uh, and, and, and the purpose of the experiment is to ultimately uh, determine the number of moles of carbon dioxide that's going to be produced in a reaction between sodium bicarbonate and acetic acid. Uh, to do this, ultimately, we're going to need the, the molar mass of the carbon dioxide. And so to find the molar mass of carbon dioxide, we, we use the periodic table, and we would find the atomic mass of the two elements and put it together. So using 15.99 uh, and whatever for oxygen and 12.011 for carbon. So we can come up with a molar mass of carbon dioxide of 44.009. So that will be our, our, our molar mass that we're going to use uh, um, in, in the calculations. Now the ultimate calculation at the end is going to be left to the to the the viewer or the student uh, to to calculate. But we're gonna we're gonna go through that and until we get there, everybody should be able to do it by that point. So we have the uh, acidic acid, and we have the sodium bicarbonate. We have a piece of filter paper, and we have a scale uh, and a thermometer. But the thermometer is just for fun. Uh, we use the thermometer just to observe the the temperature change in in the chemical reaction. Again, the, the purpose of the, of, the, of the experiment is to look at the carbon dioxide. So we're not going to spend a lot of time looking at all of the masses of everything that goes into it. But um, a, a simple calculation, uh, just to illustrate how molecular mass works, is the acetic acid, in which there's, there's four hydrogen, there's two carbon, and there's two oxygen. So taking the, mol the atomic masses of each of those elements... Uh, and, and, and running through the math, you can come up with a very simple calculation of the, the molar mass of one molecule of acetic acid. Now there's a couple of lab techniques that, that need to be worked out in, in doing this experiment, and, and one of them is measuring liquids. And so I've already measured into a, a beaker I've measured uh, 10 milliliters of acetic acid. And just to save time for the video, I've already used the graduated cylinder to uh, put another 10 milliliters in. So remember that you read a graduated cylinder by reading the bottom of the meniscus so that when you hold it up at eye level, the bottom of the curve is, is right at the 10 milliliter mark. So the bottom of the curve is right at the 10 milliliter mark. And, and that tells us that we have 10 milliliters in here. Um, you also need to keep in mind that the graduated cylinder is a precision measuring device. And even though the beaker has marks on it, this is not a measuring device. It's, it's a, a device to be used in the experiment, but it's not really uh, meant to precisely measure out uh, reactants. So that's why we use the graduated cylinder. Uh, I told my classes that the, the cylinder was a measuring device and the marks on the beaker are just to remind us how much we put in. So um, I'm combining, the, now I have a total of 20 milliliters uh, of acetic acid in the beaker. Turn the scale on and zero it. And there's more than one ways to, to, to do the massing of the, of the re reactants. But we're going to do it this way because it's going to um, very, very clearly illustrate the, the change in, in mass as the reaction takes place. 20 milliliters of the uh, acetic acid. And I'm going to use the filter paper. I'm just going to put it on the scale with the beaker and the acetic acid. And then I'm going to use the supply of sodium bicarbonate and I'm just going to add it to the filter paper um, until I get around around 74 grams total. Um, taking into account the mass of the beaker, the amount of the acetic acid, and the amount, uh, the mass of the filter paper. And so so the beginning mass of all of the reactants, the sodium bicarbonate and the acetic acid, plus the filter paper and the beaker is 74.03 grams. So 74.03 grams is the, our starting mass. Now when the reaction takes place, 
we're going to uh, produce carbon dioxide, which is going to escape. And just kind of as a, as a side um, as a side thing, we're going to take the initial temperature of the liquid, and it comes to 18 degrees Celsius today. So we're beginning with 18 degrees as our uh, beginning temperature. And now we're going to just, using the folded filter paper to ch channel the uh, sodium bicarbonate into the liquid, we're just going to add that. And the reaction begins to take place. The bubbles are produced by the carbon dioxide. And once I have all of the sodium bicarbonate in, I can just put the filter paper on and the change in mass can be directly observed. As the carbon dioxide is produced, the bubbles escape and the mass continues to change. If we if we waft a little air into the beaker, the air will replace the carbon dioxide that's formed and the mass will again continue to change. So while the reaction is is winding down, uh, we, we can take the temperature of the solution again and what we find is a temperature loss of about about four degrees Celsius. Now we're not doing any calculation with with the temperature change. It's just an interesting observation. Also, a lab thing that must you really have to think about. You never stir with a thermometer because a thermometer is glass and you're, it's not meant to be a stirring tool. And so you never stir with a thermometer. While there may be a few more a few more molecules combining, a few more uh, bubbles of carbon dioxide being formed for the sake of time, we can call it, it is down to 73.05. So we can call 73.05 our final mass. So what happened? The law of conservation of matter says uh, atoms cannot be destroyed, they can just be rearranged. And so the atoms in the, in the reaction, the sodium bicarbonate and the acetic acid, they form carbon dioxide, which is a gas, and those gas molecules uh, bubble to the top of the liquid and escaped into the room. So the, the loss in mass is the carbon dioxide that was formed. And taking the mass of the formed carbon dioxide, we're down to 73.03 .03 now, starting with our beginning mass and going to uh, the ending mass, uh, we lost roughly a gram. And in the overhead, uh, the overhead text, I'll have the exact numbers for you. So we've, we lost... Now it's down to 73.02. Uh, we, we lost a certain amount of carbon dioxide, and we're going to call it at 73.02. That is the mass of the carbon dioxide that was produced, and we can take that mass and convert it to grams by dividing the number of grams produced by the mass of one mole. So it's very roughly 1 44th of a mole that was produced. I'm going to show all the math on the screen text except the last calculation and that will be left as an exercise for the viewer. So um, it's very conveniently down to exactly 73. So I'm going to use 73 as the final mass of the reaction, 73 grams. So in conclusion, to find the number of moles in, uh, of any substance, we take, we take the mass of the substance and divide it 
by the mass of one mole, and one mole, the mass of one mole can be found by adding the atomic weights of all of the um, elements in that compound. So for carbon dioxide, we add them together and we get uh, 44.009. And we use that number as our, as our mass of one mole, take the mass that we, was produced, and that will um, be the number of moles. I hope you liked this video. Hopefully it was helpful. Um, and it, hopefully it's a, a good example of uh, how chemicals can, can be combined and how the produced chemical can be uh, taking the mass of the produced gas, we can find the number of moles. Uh, so hope you liked it. If you did, please click the like button and consider subscribing to the channel and uh, look for other science videos in my World Around Us playlist. Thanks for watching.